Again, sorry for the abrupt cutoff. It appears my uh, connection wants to just crap out of me this late at night. But yeah, we just did a bit of shopping. Upgraded Kurt's slots a bit. But, you know. Let's, uh, talk to Linde here. She seems to be a bit concerned about, uh, the Pantagruel. But I hope everything turns out alright for her. Next, we want to go to the old dragon in here. And uh, let's talk to Shan Shan here. Turns out she has a radio story for us. Fortunately, we don't know what this radio story is, but... Monk will give us some items, so... It's helpful to remember to go check her out. So let's get on the blower with Monk right away. Anyway, now that's our target destination that'll take us out of the city to the east, but, you know, there's a lot going on, and uh, maybe we can get a better look at some of the uh, key events going on here. Key events, key people, that sort of thing. <coughs> okay, so we saw this building before, but we weren't allowed to enter it. But these guys can enter just fine. That was... It appears to be someone connected to this building. Huh. Could it be? Huh. Well, let's go check it out, shall we? There is a green exclamation point there, after all. It wasn't locked this time. The interior is very eastern in style. Yep, this is it. Hey, who are you guys? Ah. Excuse us, we are... You're so suspicious! All of you wearing the same uniform. You're not military or police. So, who are you? Wait a minute, you're that? The Ashen Chevalier, Reen Schwarzer. I heard you came here as part of your school's special training. They know all that? Could they be? Yeah, I had heard that they were still here, but... The Syndicate headquartered in the Republic. Hm. I did hear about you, but I didn't think we would meet in a place like this. My name is Shin. I'm currently serving as the Crossbells representative of the international trade organization, Heiyue. And this here is Lao. He's something of a branch manager here. Hm. But this is perfect, though. I have a favor to ask of you. I see. The huge Heiyue Syndicate. So you still have a base in Crossbell after all. Yes. Around the time of the Declaration of Independence, our old building burnt down. That was about a month after the Independence Declaration. So we are currently using this building instead. But I don't get it. You're totally on the side of the Republic, aren't you? Crossbell was annexed into the Empire, 
I'm amazed Republic's branch office could still survive here. Well, we're taking care of the place while Zhao negotiates with the governor. He wants to continue to keep a path open to trading with the Empire, despite all that's going on. Well, Zhao's a pretty tough guy. I almost feel bad for that Rufus guy. They kind of seem similar in a way. Yeah, I heard about him from Lloyd and the others, too. Lloyd? Wait, you know of the special support section, yet you're from the Empire. Oh, no, actually, I was raised in Crossbell. Yuna explained the situation of her becoming enrolled in the Empire. Oh, I see how it is. Heh, <laughs> this might be the perfect task for you guys after all. Lao, if you would. Understood. They're finally getting to the point. They're kind of assuming we're just gonna help them, which worries me a bit. We would like you to collect a black briefcase for us. This morning, it fell into the lake on the tour road from Michelin. I would like for you to search for it and to find it. A black briefcase? That seems awfully suspicious at face value. Just as a reminder, we are training for an Imperial school now. We will not be able to help you if there are illegal goods inside. Oh, of course not. The Imperial Intelligence Division is getting on our backs anyway. Huh? What, what do you mean? Well, various things have been happening, but I can assure you that there's nothing illegal going on. So, do you accept? If you do retrieve it, feel free to look inside if you want. <laughs> Understood. It seems like you need the help anyway. Instructor, are you certain? Yeah, I'll take responsibility for whatever happens. But please help me out if you can, though. I see. Not sure it makes me feel that much better that you're taking responsibility, though. Well, this is fine. I'm interested in it, and it seems like it could be related to our training in some way. I concur. I see. You're all very admirable. Very good. Allow me to explain the search range, then. I believe the case fell in while we were passing by at the Ursula Hospital. It may be along the shore somewhere not far from Crossbell City. Why do you think that? To give more detail, when our employees were boarding the boat, I was tracked down by an inspector. Some trouble ensued, and I accidentally dropped the briefcase into the river. By the way, the case is waterproof, and specially designed to float in the water. Based on the flow of the current, I have a general idea of where it would end up. And you're certain there's nothing illegal inside? How rude! We were there as something of volunteers, I'll have you know. Well, to be honest, I'm happy as long as I was able to be helpful for Ellie. Wait a minute. <laughs> this request is fundamentally for her. So, you'll give us a hand, right? Oh, fine then. But you're an awfully cheeky brat, aren't you? Oh yeah, I did remember them mentioning a cheeky eastern brat once. Cheeky brat? That was two years ago! Anyway, leave it to us. Yes, thank you. Quest, briefcase search started. So anyway, we're gonna want to hop on back over to this highway here. So heading out to the highway immediately puts us here. It's somewhere near the shore alongside the Ursula By Road. 
He said it should be on the shore near Crossbell City, so we haven't we shouldn't have to go far down the lake then. Alright, let's find this black briefcase. Roger that. Anyway, check the map here, and it is in this first area, so we don't have to travel too, too far. Uh, okay, I was able to avoid that. Not this guy, though. Hopefully we finish them off. Yeah, these guys weren't much of a fight at all. Anyway. We'll uh, peer on over this cliff here. Oh, wow, look over there! The black briefcase. That has to be it. It's not going to be easy to get to it from here, though. If we had a boat nearby, that would be one thing. No, I wouldn't want to be out on a boat while the investigation team is here. I think the fastest way would be to try fishing it out. Oh, I see. That does seem efficient. <laughs> I never thought our training would include something like this. Yeah, but that crab is a bit concerning. We might want to fish that one out first. <laughs> Leave this to me then. I don't really trust Heiwei, so I want to see what's inside. You know. Hmm. Understood. We'll leave it to you. When you're prepared, go ahead. Set Yuna as the leader character and then fish. All right, well. I'm just gonna save just in case something goes terribly, terribly wrong. Like it uses all my bait. But that would be stupid. All right. And this was a cakewalk. <laughs> so, we got a blue crab. And it gives us 45 water sepith. <laughs> that was nothing. Nice catch. Excellent work. Alright, let's try to grab the briefcase now. Right, leave it to me. Yuna was able to fish out the briefcase without any trouble, and after wiping off the waterproof cover, they headed back for the harbor area. Splendid work! <laughs> As expected of the Ashen Chevalier and the students of the SSS, I suppose. Oh, I can't take this cheeky little devil. H who are you calling a little devil? That aside, can we please see what's inside the case now? Oh, right. You'll show us, won't you? Heiwei does not go back on its word. Very well. Open it, Lao. Understood. Uh, this is... Ellie and Noel. This is Dudley's. Their letters? Are they addressed to people in the city? I think these are for military officials, 
I've seen these names before. I'm guessing they're letters for family and friends from people in Michelin? Yes, that's right. We Heiwei have started such a service. But why? Why not just use the mail? And why these letters? Huh. I will explain the details. There are various circumstances we cannot go into. Nevertheless, we have been entrusted to deliver these letters to people in the city. Well then, please complete that task. Yuna, it might bother you, but let's leave this to them. Uh, Alright then, make sure they get there. I got it. Thanks, guys. It's not much, but please accept this. Quest, briefcase, ser search complete. Received the Night Sparkle Quartz. And 3,000 Mira. That's pretty nice. As you can see, Shin over there has a card game thing over his head. I stopped caring about the card game. I don't know, I'm, I'm not enjoying it, so... Yeah. Anyway, that was a fun little diversion. But, uh, we got one more fun little diversion to take care of first. Do you want to head to Orcus Tower? You bet your sweet biddy I do. N none of this is translated, but there are a couple of sub-events here. As you can see, they're not letting us get close. Because obviously these are some of the most important people, if not the most important people of the Empire. Barring the Emperor and Chancellor himself. Anyway, Vivi's here. Hey Vivi, your sister's in town. Have you said hi to her yet? <laughs> oh, shut up, you. And doing so gets you a character note for Vivi, so... It's definitely worth uh, checking out. Anyway, we want to head straight for the East Crossbell Highway now, so... Let's just go ahead and rush on over. After we leave here, we'll be heading after the cryptid. Are we ready to go? Welcome to the East Crossbill Highway. This is the uh, first highway we got to explore in Zero. It uh, heads towards Armorica Village in the north, as well as the uh, Fortress of the Sun, a bit further to the northeast. There's a few other points of interest, but those are the main ones. Alright, let's head out. The last cryptid appeared a ways outside the city, right? I already retrieved the data from Dr. Plato ahead of time. So this is the plant type that Randy and the others bought. But thinking of last time, it probably won't be the same type again. Right. We can't assume anything. Let's go straight ahead and pursue it. It shouldn't take long if we go by bike. Understood. Let's wrap this up today. It might be good to check out the monsters on the road, too. Alright, let's head out then. Alright. So 
apparently there's a couple of fishing spots and a few other things of interest. And, uh, who are these guys? Okay, this is Albil? I don't recognize him. But he gives us the ability to uh, ride a horse in the area. So if you felt like uh, you want to get around on horse rather than bike, you now have the option to. Anyway, there's a treasure chest down there. So let's, uh, let's take care of that, shall we? Slime enemies tend to have pretty high defense. As you can see by Yuna not getting very much damage on them. However, they do break fairly easily from the looks. And because they break easily, we can easily get the damage out what we need. Hopefully Yuna will be able to do some work here. Well, let's try her third crap, now that we have the chance. Okay, so it attacks in a line. Whew. That was cool. This must be for impeding. Chrono Drive R. It's, that's alright. I wish it was Chrono Burst R, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Anyway, there is a landscape spot. Here, it's very hard to find. But it is on your mini-map, so... Rub your face around enough, you'll find it. You can see the Orca's Tower from here. And the Rhineford Building as well. The Rhineford building, back when it was the IBC, is still 16 floors. While it's not as tall as the tower, that's still plenty tall. A spot where you can see both towers clearly. I think Vivi might like a shot of this. Alright, I'll send it to her later. And by later, I mean right now. Vivi! I know we just talked, but check out this cool photo I took. Oh, that seemed to make her pretty happy. I guess it was all worthwhile. Let's go. That's a red racer. Okay, there's a thing down here. It's worth checking out. And this is... Uh, what is this? A peach seedling. Oh. So that's something we can give Sandy later. I am. Nice. 
Anyway, since this thing's hiding, not much we can do for the time being. So, yeah. That's a pretty annoying move, I have to say. Good thing is they die pretty quickly. And levels abound. A new craft for Altina as well. We'll have to give that a try in the next fight. Anyway, we picked up the seedling here. So let's get back on the bike and let's go. Roads are a bit better maintained than the ones in the Empire, that's for sure. Anyway, there's this creature. The question is, will I even be able to hit it? Okay, I got an opportunity to try it out, so let's see what it does. Whew. That is pretty good. And Kurt can finish the job. Anyway. We get 50 of each type of Sephith. That's still useful. Becoming less useful as we've uh, started to unlock all these slots. Prevents death blows, delay, and vanish. So, if you're in areas with higher elements, the Dark Pendulum is really, really useful. Or against enemies with uh, natural death blows. Which, I don't know what enemies will have them, but. Seems like something I might like on Kurt at this point in time. Alright. Well, we dealt with all that. The next stop is across this bridge here and uh, take a right. I was kind of hoping I would uh, do more damage with that move. And that reg that serious quartz that Kurt has on is exactly why you want him want to get his evasion up to 100 as quickly as possible. Cause he did about four times his normal attack power there. Basically means. I counter, you're dead. So, anticipate that being useful in the future. Finish him off. The only problem with having it on Kurt, though, more than anyone else, is he doesn't have the range that is ideal in your counter attackers. It's uh, the reason why someone like B was so useful in Trails of Gold Steel too, because she could just counterattack from anywhere on the field. Uh, I think in terms of this game, I might want to make Yuna my evasion tank, but she just doesn't have the natural uh, wind quartz that Kurt does. Let's see what we catch here. Oh, that came up pretty quickly. And that is a snakehead. Man, my fishing uh, notebook's filling out rather quickly here. 
and it gets me 30 space Sabbath. So if I felt like it, I could do more fishing. Oh shit. I hit the wrong thing. Oh my god. I'm just gonna die. Yeah, I'm just gonna die. Jesus Christ, game. It made me hit the wrong thing. How am I supposed to do anything about that? <laughs> so, my option is, uh, panic. Insight on him. That would just be so useful. Alright, so we survived that. It's a good thing they weren't very, uh, powerful otherwise. Might have actually been in a world of hurt. Honestly, I just wanted to punch that thing. Alright. Well. Troubles aside. We got another new type of fight here. some evasion to go with Kurt, it's uh, a lot more enjoyable to see what happens. And that guy's just gonna freeze to death. Alright. Altina's Quartz went up to level 4, which means a 25% chance to dodge magic attacks, and a 25% chance to cause critical with your arts. So yeah. Means I should probably start specking Altina more as a caster at this point. Five U materials. Definitely not bad. Not bad at all. Now then, there's, uh... Couple paths we can go by here. And there's a treasure chest hiding right in the middle there. Oh, there's lines for this, sorry. Looks like a fork in the road. Right. There's a small village to the north on the left path, right? Hmm. Yuna? Oh, yeah, right. Armorica Village. They're famous for their local produce and their honey. Hmm? Well, unfortunately, we don't have time to go there now, I don't think. The path ahead leads to Tangram Gate. 
Yes, according to the map, it's a bit further along the right path. Let's move out. Hmm. Yuna. Anyway, I want you to treasure chest. This is the fire bell. So if you got anyone casting a lot of fire spells, then that's uh, that's your ticket for success. Gate? No, it's far too large in scale. It looks like they're building something. I have no idea what that is. Why is that monstrosity where the gate was? Huh, so the information was true. It's a large renovation according to my sources. When complete, it will rival Gorelia Fortress. What? It'll rival that gigantic fortress? No way! If Yuna hasn't heard about this, it must have just started in the past few months. They must be going at an incredible pace. I wonder if this is related to the visit in the investigation team. What the hell? Everyone just does whatever they want without thinking about these citizens. Yuna. I understand how you feel, but we need to carry on with our task. The place the cryptid appeared before is just ahead, right? Yes. Just beyond that wooden bridge is the marshland. Let's go, Yuna. Yeah, okay. I can't keep getting caught up in stuff like this. I need to give it my all. I mean, I would be pretty pissed too if you had a giant robot destroy Gorelia Fortress on your west side, just to have Calvert prop a giant one up on your east side. It's crazy. Alright, so let's check the treasure here. And inside this is a silver chain. I forget what that does. I think it's an upgraded uh, normal base accessory. But I couldn't tell you for certain what it does. Okay, so it gives a thousand health in addition to preventing against... Uh, I want to say poison. But again, I'm not sure. Anyway, we're coming up to something here. I want to save just in case. Yes, I want to overwrite the save data, please. Now, please, internet connection, do not go out on me. Because once I finish off this cryptid, I think that'll be a good stopping point. This should be it, then. It feels really tranquil here. Yeah, there's a boathouse here, so people fish often. Should we go check the place it appeared last time, then? Yes, according to my information, it was beyond that wooden gate. It looks like it's locked, though. We might as well check the boathouse then. Someone there might be able to let us through. So, I mean, we could. I mean, we will, eventually. But, uh, let's check out the fishing spot first.
because you know the same. We got more important fish to fry. And there we go. And we got a noble carp. That is the 15th fish for us. So yeah, that was a pretty effective fishing trip. Well, let's just barge right on in. <sighs> um, excuse us. Is there anybody here? Oh. Oh, hello, customers. Huh, no way. Is that Kenneth? Did Kenneth dye his hair? Oh, now that I get a good look at you, you're Reen, aren't you? <laughs> Long time no see. What? Not another classmate of Thor's. Yep, he was a classmate of mine. Kenneth Lake Lord. Huh. What a surprise to meet you in Crossbell. I heard you're a teacher now, so these must be your students? I'm Kenneth Lake Lord. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Lake Lord. Like that famous fisherman company? Yep, he's the young apprentice of the Lake Lord family, you know. He's from the same club as Annabelle, who we met in the Sutherland province. Oh yeah, her. Yeah, I heard you suddenly bumped into her too. Us fishermen really are all connected by fate. <laughs> that might be. I didn't know you were in Crossbell though, Kenneth. And you're way out here in a tiny boathouse. Yeah... Actually, my little brother came here first, and it piqued my interest. The place where the two great clubs, the Emperor's Club, and the Fishing Society met is the stuff of legends for fishermen. I think that's supposed to be older brother. Because it was uh, Kenneth's older brother who was in Crossbell during the Crossbell games. So, yeah. Anyway. Oh, right. It doesn't look like the sign on the building on East Street has changed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I am getting really tired, I'm sorry. Oh, right, the sign on the building on East Street does look like it's changed. Seems like there's a lot going on in the world of fishing. So, why are you here, Reen? Did you come here looking for something, too? Yeah. Wait, what do you mean, you're looking for something? 